This time on Beard Builds, we go through how to pick up singles in your local area. Well, not the kind of singles that you really want, but I'm also going to tell you how to fix them. Yes, that's stock VE diff life. Rightio, um, come along for the journey and I'll uh, take you through pulling it apart and um, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, so what we've got here is the diff that come out of the, the donor Calais that gave us the couch. Yeah, our beautiful, lovely couch that we still have there. Um, so what it is, it's actually a... Oh, hang on, it's on the back side here. I don't know if you can see that or not. It is a 2.92 limited slip diff. Now, the problem I've got with this is the limo is pretty sad in it. So when we had it in the car, it had, um, yeah was um a bit secondhand so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop the hat off and um go through how to actually fix the internals of this diff okay so i'm just going to bust this case apart real quick um and uh yeah we'll uh go from there and get the top hat off oh, that's good Okay, so all the bolts are out. <clears throat> now, it's important to note that when you're looking at the hat bolts, there is two different lengths. So, passenger side bolts, driver side bolts, long and short, and then the rest of them are all just one length. All right, so now it's just about getting the hat off. Um, the seals are gonna come out anyway. Um, wanna try and leave them as long as we can, I mean, they're not bad at the moment, but yeah. All right, so give the hat a bit of a tap both ways to get it off the dowels. Right here. It's the inside of a VE diff, in case anyone's wondering. Look pretty good, don't look too bad. All right, I don't know if you can see this or not, but one of the things you want to look at when you first pull it apart is the contact wear area that it's had whilst it's been in the car. Now, this has got a beautiful wear pattern on it, completely even all the way across the tooth. So, we know that the pinion angle or pinion height is set correctly. So we're not going to touch the pinion in this when we take it out. Okay, so there's no need to take the pinion out of this. So what we'll do is we'll pop this center out and then in behind the spider gears on the inside there is um, where your clutch cones are. And then we'll have a look at how bad they are. So yeah, pop the next bit out and we'll go from there. Okay, so um, what I want to go through now is how you actually set up the sideways centering of the actual crown wheel in relation to the pinion. How Commodore diffs do it is they've got shims. So that there is the passenger side shim. This would be the driver side shim. So they set in up against the face of the bearing and then your circlip goes in there after that to get it in and get it all lined up. Okay, so I've taken that circlip out. Now, I'll show you very quickly, the distance between the thickness of those shims is completely different. So, you've checked that wear pattern on the diff and you've worked out that that wear pattern is actually really, really good. 
So we know that we've got the diff in a central position. Now, what we have to remember is which side those shims go. So, what I like to do is I always put my shim that goes with my big split ring, big circle clip, they go together. And also, you've got an odd size seal as well. So, access on, so you've got a big and a small access seal. All right, so the big side is the driver side, remember that. And small side is the passenger side. Okay, cool, righty -o. so I'll uh, start smacking that out now and um, yeah, we can move on from there. Okay, so we've got the center section out now and you can get a better appreciation of the diff gears now, or the pinion, or the crown wheel, sorry. Jesus Christ, get it right. So you can see all of the marks on there, they've got a beautiful even wear pattern on each of those teeth. Yeah. Right, so the problem that we've got now is we have to get this center section apart so that in behind there we can fix the down behind that big gear there and the big gear up here is where your clutch pack stuff is. So they've got just got friction plates in them, and those friction plates wear. And that's what causes you to lose your limited slip of your limited slipness. So yeah, we'll um, punch that out. So. Okay, so I got the ring gear off. It's important when you um, take the ring gear off of these things that um, you only sort of give it a tap with a soft face mallet. Um, sometimes they are fairly well hard on the hub, um, on the actual housing itself. So, I mean, there is a couple of ways that you can do this. So, when you go to put it back on, you leave this at room. You leave the ring gear at room temperature. And then you stick the center section in the freezer. And what that'll do is it'll actually help the middle contract. You spin it upside down, drop the ring gear over, and bolt your arm. Or you can heat the ring gear and get that to stretch, put that in the freezer as well. Yep, or you can get them up as tight as you can by hand once you've cleaned all this gunk off the inside of them, giving it a bit of a clean up, and then the same as on the center section. They'll actually generally go pretty much nearly all the way back. The one thing that you don't want to do is don't want to put like a couple of bolts in there and then try and ram it home with like a rattle gun or something like that that's never ever good for the ring gear so um yeah now that we've got the ring gear off we can um carefully put that aside and now we can start knocking that pin out to um grab our center pin out so that we can pull the guts of this apart Go. If my uh, vice doesn't fall apart in the first place. Okay, so managed to knock the pin through into the center pin. So, as you can see there, bad boys tapped into there. So now we can um, disassemble the the inside of the diff. Now the tricky part is. Getting it so that the gear set actually comes out. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but what you do is you rotate one of the side gears around, then that gets your, your little spider gears out, like such. Now we need to pull these out, the big side gears. Ugh. I love it when they um, sort of halfway get cocked because of the the LSD pack, but I'll get him out. All right, so each side's got a shim. You need to keep that together. Now, this is what causes 
LSD failure in a ZF series diff. So, steel plates, pop that back on there. All right. Now, as you can see here, the friction plate, one side, absolutely flush. So it's basically just got a skim of it left. That one's actually worn off. That side there is uh, pretty much fingered as well. So next one down, steel. Ooh, so this clutch back, absolutely fingered. So this diff wouldn't have been too far off from uh, actually exploding. So what happens is when your clutch packs wear, they um, end up with a enough sidewards pressure then to let your, your spider gears out from the side and they kind of collapse out. Um, and those internal gears come out of mesh, basically go over the top of each other and smash it to bits. So what you can do now is, and what I'm gonna try and do is, get a different set of clutches for it, and then we can just basically slap it back together. Okay, let's see if I can look at my feet in this shot, but actually get a decent sort of explanation for you to show you why this LSD's failed. I tried to show you inside, but I figured, you know what, there's probably not enough light in there. All right, so we'll drag this one out. Now, that's what they're kind of meant to look like, right? So they've actually got friction pads on them. They rub between the two steels. It's exactly like how a clutch would work in a car. Obviously, there's no pressure plate there though, but the side loading pressure of the spider gears is what acts as like the pressure plate type thing in there. As you can see though, as we get progressively further in, there's always a stuffed one and they're fairly worn down. Now, these pads on this clutch just have material left. This one on the other hand, flat. Yes, it still looks like they're there, but only just. All right, now this is the side that's extremely bad. Even the steels have got scoring on them. You can see here it's worn that pad away. That side of it though is still fairly good. This steel here, completely stuffed. Super scored, bugged. This clutch, wow. As you can tell, that one's pretty much worn off. It's like a little mini steel of its own. That steel is pretty packed as well. And again, the world's most absolutely crapped out clutch disc. All right, so, uh, yeah, like I said, now that you've actually seen them, um, the rest of the video showed you how to get the diff apart. As you can tell, extremely messy. I'm gonna obviously clean it all up and stuff. But um, yeah, I think this diff was pulled apart at the right time. So um, all the gear pattern wear seems to be good. Um, there's no sort of like odd wear pattern in there and those spider gears in the center, well, with the amount of damage just under those clutch plates, I am desperately surprised. I haven't seen any bad wear on them. So, um, it's kind of where we're at. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can order a set of uh, clutches and steels, but there's actually a mob in Melbourne that um, are a diff shop. They've made their own sort of clutch plates that don't wear out. Um, they're a heat treated steel top setup. I'm gonna see how expensive they are um, and see if I can get them versus, I don't really wanna stick another set of cl stock clutches in there and put it back together because my goal is to put this together as cheap as I can, set it up correctly and then move it down the road. You know what? I'm sure somebody will buy an LSD that's been refurbed. So let's uh, go from there. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Look, I um, did the teardown video on the diff, and what I wanna do is, like I said, um, I know there's a mob in Melbourne, I can't remember exactly where they are, pretty sure it's Preston, that um, are a performance diff joint, and I've seen them do replacement clutch packs. It's their own type of thing. They're a hard steel one. I reckon that'd be fantastic to try and get a hold of and see whether they'll actually just sell them to me instead of just rebuild a diff for me with them in them. Um, so part one is going to be the teardown and there will be a part two eventually on um, how to rebuild this diff. So yes, I've pulled it apart. I may not have showed things in the video like I've marked the, the crown wheel location. 
onto the diff center itself. So yeah, so I didn't just smack the crown wheel off and stuff like that. It's gonna go back on in the same orientation that it came off and all that sort of stuff. Um, you will see in the diff build video how it all goes back together anyway. Um, I'm not just gonna half ass do it. So look, um, like I said, this is part one. There will be a part two. I don't know when the part two's coming, but um, yes. Uh, also, uh, I'll give you a little bit of a, an update too. Um, there's going to be a video coming out shortly about the posty bikes. I haven't seemed to have done any videos on them lately. I have in the background. I've kind of got to a point now where something big has happened and I've uh, done some investigation and it's not kind of what I was expecting. But um, that's, it is what it is. So we'll kind of go from there. Um, yeah, thanks again for watching the video. Hopefully somebody learned something about it. Um, yeah, uh, when I get to do part two, there'll definitely be some learning in that, especially how to reassemble the diff. But yeah, we'll go from there. All right, guys, as always, cheers for watching. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy, legends.